What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Fauci Cinema, and today I am talking about a newly released horror film. If you want to call it a horror film, it's more of a drama thriller with some horror elements, but damn, was it scary. I'm talking about 2022's The Black Phone, and I hear the phone, and it is ringing. Yeah, here we go. What's going on? Welcome to the channel. Like I said, uh, this is a newly released 2022 film just released on the 24th of June. I wanted to save my spoiler review till Sunday evening, if not Monday. So this is going to be spoiler filled, ladies and gentlemen. So if you have not seen it, don't watch this video unless you don't care about spoilers. Because I might ruin it for you. But this movie stars Ethan Hawke. And it is directed by Scott Derrickson. Who also directed Sinister. Which also starred Ethan Hawke. So that is what intrigued my interest. I was a huge fan of Sinister. I still am. It's not a movie I watch often. Sinister. Because I don't want it to ruin the effect that it has on me. Um, like I've said on the channel before. It is like the only movie that has ever actually scared me. And made me, you know, run to my bedroom and put the covers over my head and not remove the covers until the next morning. Until the daylight and the sunlight was out. Because that movie was terrifying. Ethan Hawke's performance was great. And Scott Derrickson's direction was amazing. And I was anticipating The Black Phone to be the same. Uh, the Black Phone tells the story of a man named The Grabber. And he kidnaps kids and keeps them alive for, you know a little bit of period of time and then disposes of the bodies later and the final boy that he kidnaps you know gains the strength from these phone calls that come through this black phone in the basement which is not connected to a line but yet it rings with the with the spirit of the children that died before to help him try to survive this epic ordeal so the question is will he survive or will he perish like the others Stay tuned, you're going to find out. Well, right off the bat, you're getting these cool late 70s, early 80s vibes, which I'm digging because I'm a huge fan of those types of movies. Anything set in that time period, for the most part, I'm probably going to dig it. And that had it going in its favor for me right off the bat. Um, we're at this baseball game, which conveniently, my son plays baseball, so more connection for me. And the funny thing is, the kid that hits the home run Number 27, that's the kid that destroyed my son's season. It just keeps getting thrown in my face. But no, seriously, he did lose to a kid who's 27 who hit a home run. Just like that kid did. So, boom, had me really connected right off the bat. This was crazy. We got the upbeat music playing. We got having a good time. You know, you think, oh, this is what kind of, this is this movie's going good. It's like an upbeat kind of movement. No. Not at all. You see the the screen slow down fading as the black van pulls out in front of this kid and then the credits roll with this amazing score haunting creeping score would you like to see a magic just it was amazing it, it got you you went from happy to freaking terrified in the snap of a finger i was invested right off the bat the score and the music throughout this film was amazing it was so creepy and eerie and it fit perfectly this movie has great mood has great atmosphere the cinematography was great it's just a terrifying film and i know going into this this was one of my highly anticipated films of the year obviously this and of course the halloween fanboy that i am halloween ends even though kills let me down a little bit and I'm rocking the Halloween 2 shirt because, you know, it's what I do. It's what I do. I represent my man, Michael, every day. Um, but as this story goes, we fall in love with the character of Finn, Finley, Finn. No, 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 not Finley. Finny and Finn. Um, and he's, you know, just, he's an athlete. He's good at baseball and whatnot, but he's still getting picked on, still getting beat up. Um... 
and, and which is kind of ridiculous because usually the athlete's kind of like the cool kid not getting picked on, but for some reason they think he's gay, I guess. Or they just like to use the F word for gay, which I don't like to say because that's kind of fucking derogatory and I'm not going to do that. Um, but I guess this other badass kid, dude, I think his name was Robin. She's a fighting machine, dude. He beats the shit out of this one kid and then he's there to protect him. But he tells Finney, you're going to have to stand up for yourself one of these days because I'm always not going to be there. And you don't realize that that's going to come back come back into play a little bit later on. Um, and then Finney has a sister. She is amazing. He has a sister named Gwen, played by Madeline McGraw. Holy buckets, dude. Holy buckets. She was a huge bright spot in this movie. She, she's just a young girl. But like I've heard in Lee McCoy from Drum Dums, she's going places. This is not the last time you're going to see this girl. She was that fire. She was that spark in this movie. She was the driving force behind trying to find Finney. Um, her comedy was so well placed. Like that's what a real kid would want to say to adults in this movie. But she goes ahead and does it. She's talking to those detectives. And she calls them fucking fart knockers. And I lost it in the middle of the theater. Fucking fart knockers. She was fantastic throughout this whole movie. Her process, her dreams that she was having, you know, her contemplation with, is there a God? Is there not a God? She would pray every night to Jesus, but then question if he was real, because why would he let all this bad stuff happen and let this stuff happen to Finney? However, he was giving her the dreams to help find him, to help find the other kids that were killed. And I thought that was a really great sub-story in this movie, and I thought she did a great job. The dad... Dude, Jeremy Davies played M. Shaw, the father. Fucking total asshole. Alcoholic, beating his daughter. Like, what the fuck? And, however, once this movie comes to a conclusion, I think he turns a 180, and he's going to change who he is because he knows how bad he's been. He should have been out there looking for Finney, and he wasn't. And he didn't believe Gwen. He didn't believe Gwen. I think he's gonna. he would have turned a 180. You know what I mean? So that was amazing. But... The main story follows Finney's trapped in the basement. You know, it takes a while before he actually gets kidnapped by the Grabber. Um, but the Grabber, played by Ethan Hawke, is fantastic. He's so creepy. The different kind of masks that he uses, the like the mental games he plays with Finney throughout this movie, it's fantastic. Uh, he, he seems like a, a creepy guy, but nice at the same time. Like, he's bringing him food. He's bringing him sprites. Um... You know, he's down there talking to him. He's kind of creepy as fuck. He's watching him sleep down in the basement. I mean, who doesn't do that? I'm doing that right now to a kid. Wait, did I just say that? Oh, crap. I'm kidding. I'm not watching anybody. I promise. There's nobody down here. There's nobody. I don't have any black balloons down here. It's because they're in my van in the driveway. <laughs> don't tell anyone. And I don't have a phone down here on the wall because it doesn't work. But yeah, the, the whole aesthetic. He's a magician. He's dressed in black. He's so creepy. The dreams that Gwen has that have him in it. Like, every kid that was kidnapped, she has a dream about it. How it happened. What went down. To, and that's how she was helping the, the, the detectives find, you know, the grabber and where Finney was. But the dreams were great. They didn't... They didn't show him actually killing the kids. He didn't go into detail. Might have been a, t a tad little bit of a knock on the film, but I think we kind of got the idea. Usually I'm one of those that wants to see it. I think it worked for this film. Sh don't show, just, you know, just tell a little bit what happened. Don't show the whole thing. And I think it worked. It made it creepier. Um, the phone calls, I thought they were great. You know, the jump scares it reminded me of sinister a lot you had that one kid floating upside down with the blood dripping and then um you know he's talking on the other kid they show they show finney on the phone then switch to the angle and then there's the dead kid behind him um and then his best friend you know his best friend was there at the end talking to him telling him he had to step up he had to do this you know the little montage training montage step back step forward step back a ten hit you know Raise the phone. Step four. Step back. Step four. Swing. I thought that was great. I know people didn't like that. I did. I thought that was great. Um, this one definitely pulled at your, you know, pulled at your heartstrings because you're rooting for Finney to get out of here, but you really don't know if it's ever going to happen. You don't know if he's gonna, you know, 
grab the strength inside of him to fight back to do what he had to do to escape. I thought the phone calls were very sentimental. You know, all the dead kids talking to him and whatnot. The fact that his sister loved him so much to be out there. A lot of the nights searching, trying to find the house she found in her dreams. You know, she would never give up. And she's always fighting to try to bring Finney home. Because the bond of brother and sister that they have was stronger than any bond that there possibly could be. And I thought that was great. I, You know, I'm not one to get really emotional with these movies. But this one was kind of doing it. It was pulling me. It was great. It was, you know, tugging at those heartstrings. And I really dug it for that, for sure. The acting from everybody was fantastic. Um, the brother, Max, I don't know how he didn't know, you know, that his brother was holding the kids down below. Probably because he was high on cocaine, for the most part, looking up like Scarface. But he had the map of the kidnappings, and he was showing the cops like he could help. And then the camera zooms down after the cops leave, and it's in the basement. And you're like, wait, did, did we just, is it really, Matt, uh, but yes, that was the same house. And the, the, the house that Gwen had visions of was the house across the street, because where he placed the bodies was different than where he did, you know, the, the cruel things he did to the children. And I guess he liked to play a game, so he left the door unlocked for Finney to go up, and he was going to be waiting up there with a belt to just start wailing on him. And that was just one part of the game that the grabber wanted to play. But the but Finney would never do it because he had the phone calls telling him what to do. Like they were, they taught him that they had a cable to try to climb out the window. They hit it. Um, the other one was digging up at the floor, you know, digging, trying to dig a hole in the ground. So Finney dug a hole in the ground. They told him where the freezer was to, to knock away at the wall to get into the freezer. You thought they were all ways to escape in the basement, but they were really ways to set up the grabber to meet his final demise, which was amazing. The buildup, the setup, it was fantastic. And then once the final moments finally come, when Finney has to, you know, when Max finally finds Finney in the basement and the grabber kills him with the, with the axe in the head, which was amazing, by the way. This is the time where Finney had to step up, choose his play wisely. That final act was fucking fantastic. The way he dug that hole, he led him back that hallway. He fell in the hole on that sore grate, broke his leg, and then Finney just starts wailing on him with that phone that was filled up with the dirt that Robin told him to do to make it heavier. And he's wailing on him and wailing on him. And you're like, oh shit, dude, he's gonna, the grabber's, grabber's gonna find a way to get him. He's gonna find a way to get him. He does finally grab him. But then when he flips him over, he has that excess cord, ties it around the grabber's throat, and is pulling it in a chokehold from what he saw earlier in the movie during one of the fights. And he's just pulling him and choking him. As he's looking at that dog barking, which, by the way, I'd have been fucking lost because I'm afraid of dogs. So I would have shut down immediately. But that's just for my job. But Finney is braver than I am. All he heard in the back of his mind was Bruce, that baseball player, say, Man, your arm is mint. And he went, boom! Fucking snapped the grabber's neck. He grabber falls back into that hole. And then the freezer that he happened to open up earlier was for the meat for the dog so he could just walk out the front door. Because he got the, the padlock code from one of the other kids that was trapped down there because he, he tied it into the wall. And that scene, whenever he escaped earlier, after he put the code and he bolted out the door. Dude, when he caught him, Ethan Hawke caught him and put that knife to his throat and said, if, if you say a word, I will cut you like, gut you like a pig and choke you with your intestines right here in the streets. Ooh, a little bit of screen vibes there. I thought he was going to say, I'm going to gut you like a fish, you understand? Intense shit, intense situations. But Finney had the courage and the bravery to fight back finally after this whole movie being the victim. He fought back. He took out the grabber like a damn man and did his business. And then he was reunited with his sister. And the music they play, you know, brother and sister back together. They loved each other and they had a bond more than anybody else in this movie. It wrapped up so nicely. I freaking loved it. Ethan Hawke owned. The only thing I would say is maybe give us a little bit more Ethan Hawke. Maybe give us a little bit more of how he kidnapped the other kids and what exactly he did to them. But I think this was one of the ones, uh, tell us, don't show us. We didn't need to see it. So I think that's why they did that. But I thought it was amazing. I thought this movie was fantastic. And Finney 
grew up, and then he went back to school, and they were like, hey, hey Finny, he's like, call me Finn, because he grew up through this ordeal. He grew up into be the braver, the tougher. Those bullies that messed with him before, that they weren't going to mess with him anymore, because they know what he did to the grabber, and they, we don't want no part of that, because that kid's a badass. This movie was badass. In my score for this movie, you're not going to believe this, I gave this a 5 out of 5. A perfect film for me. I was amazed how much I loved this movie. My wife did not like it. She was like, you liked it? I said, I fucking loved it. Five out of five. It was a great freaking fun-ass ride. Creepy ride. If you have not seen it and you watch this, I hope I didn't spoil it for you. But go check it out. It's a freaking badass movie. Hopefully you like my review. Definitely make sure to hit the like on the video. Hit the subscribe. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I've been having a bunch of new, new, uh, subscribers i'm loving every minute of it if you love and what you see and you want to support me in any way definitely make sure to click on my patreon that is down in the comment section below also buy, buy me a coffee's down there and i'm new to youtube membership you will get youtube if you join my youtube membership you will get a custom badge in the chat or in the comment section you will get my content released early before anybody else and it's only 2.99 a month so i think it's a pretty good damn deal. You'll get your name on the card before every single video. And you'll also get pay you'll get requests. If you want a ranking and review, feel free to shoot it out, and I will do that for you guys. I love you guys very, very much. So I'm going to keep grinding, slashing, and fucking bashing for you guys. And I got to go get the phone because I think there's a dead kid calling me so I can get out of this basement that I've been recording YouTube videos in because I've been locked down here all fucking day. Have a scary day, everybody. Love you guys.